Hello everyone. I'm so glad you're joining me. My name is Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and today is video number two in a t-shirt collage style quilt along vlog. <laughs> so yesterday I posted the first video and I'm just going to post videos through the making of this quilt top. I had tons and tons of awesome comments and feedback on yesterday's video. So I just want to start off today by saying thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you following along and leaving me all of your kind messages and encouragement. I had a couple questions and so we're going to cover those two questions in today's video. Before we get started, I just want to catch up to where we are because yesterday when we left off, I had cut uh, our block number 13 and I was going to prepare some other blocks and so you can see all of our pink blocks have been stabilized and cut. Let me show you right here what that looks like up on the wall. So you get a better idea of what the quilt is starting to look like. So as we come back, you'll notice there were some empty spots and we're going to do some fun stuff today. And so just to let you know, if you would like to get a copy of this PDF, I am giving this to you as my gift. <laughs> and uh, you can uh, jump down to the description box below and download this. It is uh, a PDF for a heart applique and we're going to do a square and square uh, so we're going to fill in some empty spaces with some fun different blocks today. So I am really, really excited. Before we begin today, I want to go ahead and uh, go over the two questions that I had from yesterday's video. The first question was from Star Tipper. And she asked, do I stabilize my cotton fabric that I'm adding to my t-shirt quilts? And the answer is no. There's no need to stabilize or add stabilizer to uh, any of the cotton fabrics that we are adding into our quilt. I use them just the way they are. However, I do stabilize any type of clothing items. And uh, the two different materials, they work really well together. And I've never had an issue doing it this way. My second question was from Linda. And Linda uh, said it was a little bit confusing looking at the layout and how did I decide where all of these blocks go. And what I'm going to do, Linda, is in the description box of this video, I'm going to link another video that I did several months ago where I walked through uh, the planning stages of another t-shirt quilt, much like this one, uh, and decided where to place all of my blocks. And so I think that video would answer a lot of your questions and uh, hopefully it does. And if not, feel free to uh, ask more questions in the comment section below. I'm hoping that that would be a good visual and uh, an easy way for you to actually see the planning stage of moving your blocks around. Okay, so we're ready to get started today. All of my pink blocks, again, are up on the wall. I'm going to start filling in all of these empty spaces with some patchwork and some applique. Let me bring you down a little bit closer. Now keeping in mind that each one of these little squares on this graph represents a finished 2 inch block. It's really easy to see how big we need to make these areas that are in white to fill in all of our empty spaces. I've already gone through and figured out uh, my game plan for filling in uh, the empty spaces through this area. For this area, it's two by two squares, which means I need to cut a block and add my seam allowance, which means this block, when I cut it out, will be four and a half by four and a half. And I've decided I wanted to place a heart applique right in the middle of this block. And so that's what you see here. This was sized to fit into a finished four inch block. So I'm not exactly sure how big the heart is, but if you center it in four inches, this is what it's gonna look like. 
So that's going to be up in this area. Coming down here, I divided this section into four different blocks. I'm going to do a four patch here. I'm going to do my square and square here, another four patch, and another square and square. And so that is what this is. This is a paper piecing template. And when we're done, it will met, uh, our block will measure four and a half by four and a half, which is exactly what we need, giving us our seam allowances. We're going to move up here and I'm going to do a pinwheel. And so I'll bring them along for that. And I have the measurements just written down here for the squares that we need to prepare for our pinwheel to finish at six and a half by six and a half inches. I'm going to make another pinwheel right down here. That's what I've decided to do. <laughs> so we're going to be doing some applique and patchwork today and some paper piecing. Again, if you'd like to get this uh, little PDF that I've made, I'm going to have it in the description box below. So you can go grab that and use it in any of your quilting projects. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start with the heart applique. To start with this block, I know that I need a four and a half by four and a half inch square. I decided to use this green fabric to make my background. So here you'll see I'm cutting a four and a half by four and a half inch square. Next, I'm going to take my template and some heat and bond light and trace my heart onto the heat and bond light. We'll do a rough trim around my shape. And we're going to fuse that onto the back side of some pink fabric and then cut directly on the line. Once we have our shape, we can go ahead and fuse that to our background square. Once we've fused the heart onto the background square, we can go ahead and do a, a stitch to secure this in place. Today I'm using a satin stitch. I'm just going around the perimeter of the heart. I have all kinds of videos if you are completely new to applique that you can check out tips and tricks on doing a satin stitch. So I'll just bring you along as I do the satin stitch around my heart and we will stitch this together. You can see I'm using a piece of tearaway stabilizer underneath my heart. This keeps all of my stitches nice and pretty all the way through. Now that that's done, let's take a quick look at how our heart block looks up on the wall with our t-shirt blocks. The very next thing we're going to do is make some four patches. I have four layers of fabric here. The pretty sides are facing each other on these two and the pretty side is facing each other on the bottom two. I have a light and a dark and a light and a dark. So to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a nice clean edge. So I'm just going to trim away the biased edge away from my four layers of fabric. I'm going to scoop my ruler over two and a half inches and I'm going to make a cut. That'll give me four strips that measure two and a half inches wide. I'm going to take away all my extra fabric and I'm going to make two sets of strips. The first two and the second two. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew straight down with a quarter inch seam allowance and press that open towards the dark side. So here's my two strips. I have my seam pressed towards the darker fabric. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just cut this in half to give myself two pieces of each one of these sets.
Here I'm just measuring how wide it is. It doesn't have to be exact. I just want to cut it so that I can get the most use out of these strip sets. So I'm just going to cut these in half. And the very next thing I'm going to do is layer the dark side onto the light side. Match up that seam right in the middle. Those seams should nest right in place because we've pressed to the dark side. Press to the dark side. <laughs> Get it all nice and flat. Then we're going to line this up with a straight line on our cutting mat. Just like you see me doing right here. Going to line up both sets. We're going to clean away the right side edge to give ourselves a nice pretty edge to work from. And then we're going to measure over again another two and a half inches and make another cut. Now these pieces will be nested together so carefully take those over to your sewing machine and so again with another quarter inch seam allowance right down this raw edge. I'm back from sewing and pressing and here is my perfect four patch that measures four and a half inches by four and a half inches. That is going to fill in these two places on my quilt and we'll repeat this process all the way through. Now anytime I want to do a four patch unit, I will repeat the same process to make my four patches. Now we're going to go through really quick the square and square uh, little pattern that I've provided with this PDF. What you'll see here is I have the middle fabric, what's going to be right in the middle of our square and square. This fabric I've cut four and a half by four and a half inches. I'm making two of these. So I have two of those. That'll be our center. And then I have two pieces that I cut at four and a quarter by four and a quarter. This is going to go around our uh, middle portion of the square and square. So I have two for this one and two for this one. So let's go ahead and prepare these fabrics. I'm going to move my four and a half inch squares off to the side. These fabrics, I'm going to go ahead and cut them right in half. So I'm just lining up the points to align on my cutting mat. And we're going to cut those right in half. giving us four pieces that are slightly bigger than our template for our corners. So let's put, let's see, those go with those and those go with that one. <laughs> so now we can put that off to the side. The next thing we're going to do is cut out our paper piecing template directly on the line. If you print this actual size, in your uh, PDF reader, it should print out four and a half by four and a half inches. And now I'll turn it and cut out these other two lines. Sure that's straight. There we go. So the very first thing I'm going to do, here's our paper piecing template. 
is line up our four and a half inch square. Oh, no, hold on, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I wanna go ahead and pre-fold these lines to make it easier to do the paper piecing. I almost jumped ahead of myself. I'm just using a straight edge ruler and folding directly on these lines. And many of you have watched my other videos. You've seen how I do my paper piecing. I don't like to actually sew through the paper and I like to be able to reuse this template over and over again. So I'm just folding on my sewing lines. Just like that. That gives us a shape on the back that I'm going to apply a little bit of glue stick to. We will line up the pretty side facing up directly over top of our paper piecing pattern. And I'm gonna bring this to the iron and just heat set and dry that glue really quick and then we'll come right back. Now that this glue is dry, the fabric and the paper are going to stay together and I can work with this. We're gonna go ahead, <clears throat> pardon me, and fold up our folding lines and trim away the pink fabric leaving a quarter of an inch beyond our paper fold. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for all four sides. Now, as, now here is our diamond shape inside of our square. And we're ready to start adding the corners. So I have my blue pieces here. What I'm gonna do, and uh, you know what? I'll put a link to the Daisy Day quilt and show you the actual sewing process uh, for this video to keep things short because I have a lot to cram into this video today. I'm just going to show you. We are going to bring this to the sewing machine with the paper fold side up, just like this. We're going to put the pretty side of our square to the pretty side of our pink fabric or the fabric in the center. We're going to line up that raw edge, just like you see here, and we're going to sew not on the paper, but right next to this paper fold from the edge to the edge. And I'm gonna do that on this side and then flip it around and do it on the opposite side. Once I have those two pieces on there and pressed, we're gonna come back. Okay, I have these two sides added and I've pressed them open and this is what we look like. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off some extra on the next two sides. Again, I'm just lining up to the raw edge of the pink fabric and trimming away these extra bits. Just like that. We'll flip it around and trim away to a quarter of an inch. There's those two sides and now we're ready to add these. So again, we'll bring it to the sewing machine with the paper fold side up. We'll line up our raw edge, pretty sides facing together and sew from edge to edge on both sides and press that open. And coming back one more time, we have added the other two sides and press that open. So now we can use our paper template to trim up everything that hangs off the edge. Just 
making sure everything stays nice and straight. I like to actually use the lines on my mat just in case I've ac accidentally trimmed my paper away because I reuse these templates over and over. And it's very possible that I might have trimmed away some paper. <laughs> okay, so now for the big reveal, we're just going to remove our paper template away and here is our finished square in a square you see we have the extra bits on all of our points that is for our seam allowance uh, for joining our next blocks and so uh, if everything goes <laughs> according to plan we should not lose these pretty little points with our square in a square now each time I decide to do a square in a square I'll use the same template and repeat this process throughout my quilt. Now let's take a look at my quilt with the two square and square blocks added. I think this is shaping up to be so pretty. So the fourth block technique that I want to show you today is the pinwheel. And that's going to be our last block construction for today. I feel like we're cramming a lot into this video. But a lot of useful blocks that you could incorporate into your quilts. So this is a pinwheel block and it's made up of half square triangles. So we want to make a pinwheel block that is six and a half by six and a half inches. And we are going to use two. I'm going to make one with you and then make one off camera. I'm going to put a pinwheel here and a pinwheel in this area right here. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll see I have four squares, two of each color, and I've cut these to three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So I have two pink and two green. The very first thing we're going to do is Turn over onto the back side of two of your squares. I'm going to take a ruler and with a heat erase pen or a water soluble pen, we're going to make a line from corner to corner on both squares. On not the pretty side on the other side <laughs> I don't know if I said that or not so we're going to take pretty side of the green and pretty side of the pink and match those together pretty side to pretty side and match those together and line everything up nice and perfect at the sewing machine and what we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter inch seam on both sides of that line. We're not sewing directly on the line. We're going to sew a quarter inch on the right side and then flip it around and sew a quarter inch on the other side. Once we've done that, give that a press, we're going to come back before we do anything else. Now I'm back from sewing my quarter inch seam. Let's see if we could see that. I used a white thread so you might not be able to see that as well, but it's a quarter inch on both sides of that center line. Refocus. <laughs> so now we can go ahead and cut apart our triangles right on the line that we marked from corner to corner. We can take this to the iron and we're going to press our half square triangle towards the dark side. A 
We are back from pressing and I've pressed everything to the green side. So we have our four half square triangles just like this. And there's so many things you can do with a half square triangle. You could put them together just like this. Wouldn't that be cute? I might do that somewhere else in the quilt. You could, let's see, we'll turn this one this way like that. And look, there's another square and a square. <laughs> let's see, we will always get turned around like that. No, hold on a second. Let me figure this out. Okay. <laughs> it took me a second. We're going to start off like this and we're going to rotate this one one time. No, rotating the wrong way. There we go. And let's rotate this like that. That is not doing what I want it to do. Oh goodness, let me figure this out. Okay, I think the problem is I need another cup of coffee. I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> so I have my diagonal going from top to bottom uh, just like this. So I'm going to rotate this one time to the right. I'm going to rotate this one two times. And I'm going to rotate this one three times. Two. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> it's really not that difficult. So you could do it uh, just like this. Again, so many different possibilities with half square triangles. We're going to do a pinwheel, so we're putting it together just like this. I am going to nest these two seams together and sew right down this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to nest these two together and sew right down with a quarter inch seam allowance and we'll be right back. Now I'm back from joining these and pressing them open. The seam on this top portion I've pressed to the left. The seam on the bottom portion I've pressed to the right so that we can nest those two seams right together and now join the top and bottom right through here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now here's our finished six and a half by six and a half inch pinwheel. I think that turned out so pretty. Now let me show you what I did. I did, once I joined at the top and bottom together, I pressed this open because this center point it's so thick when you press all your seams to one side. So if you like to press your seams open, your pinwheel will be a lot thinner in this middle section. See all my seams on this one I pressed open. So it's really a personal preference whether you press open or you press to the side. They both measure six and a half inches. It's just one tends to be a little bit thicker right where all of these seams come together. But look how pretty that is. So I'm going to add this to the board. And then that's all of the patchwork that I'm going to do today with you. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I still have one more heart and one more four patch to make. I'll make that off camera. Then all of these white spaces will be filled. And we're ready to start joining these blocks together. And this is where we are as I prepare my last two patchwork pieces and we start joining these blocks together. Now that I've finished up my last two little patchwork blocks, everything you see in pink is cut out, pieced together, and up on the board. So we're going to go ahead and start piecing this pink section together. What you're going to notice is we're going to have some partial seams this little block here, there will be partial seams to join this section together. And then this is also going to be a partial seam where all of our seams interconnect right through here. I'm trying to figure out if that's going to be the only two in this section. I think so. 
So what we're going to do is start out piecing together chunks that have the same width of seam. So between block number five and block 45, we have a seam right there. And then if we come down here, we have a seam between these two blocks. So I'll piece these two blocks together and create one unit that has the same seam here. And then I'll piece this to the bottom of 45 and I'll piece 45 to the bottom of piece number five. We're gonna make this one chunk. While I'm sewing, I'm also going to piece together, uh, let's see, I could join these four blocks together and sew it to the bottom of 21 right there. And then also, let's take a look. We have one seam here these two blocks can be sewn together and sewn to the side of 30. And I think that's everything we can do at this point. So let's go ahead and do make this a unit, make this a unit, and make this a unit. And once I have all of that done, we're going to meet back. Okay, we're going to come back and you'll notice three darker sections. This one is together. It could be colored this dark, but I wanted you to see there's still separate sections. And what I'm gonna do is split the screen and show you right over here what this looks like up on the board. And if you need to pause this at any time, you could go ahead and do that. I'm gonna scoot this over so you can see. So you see the graph and you see all the segments up on the board. So we have this section here is now one unit. We have a loose piece down here, piece number four. We have this section, whoops. <laughs> this section here is now a unit. We still have all of these light pink areas. These are all loose still. And then I joined this section here. Everything is up on the board and broken into sections. Now we're going to be dealing with two different partial seams. We have a partial seam with this heart block and we have a partial seam with our pinwheel. Partial seams basically mean that uh, there's no even seams to join this little tiny piece in here. So we're going to have some open seams as we piece our way around the center block. Same here, we're going to piece our way around this block. So let's go ahead and start with the pinwheel block. The first thing we want to look at is we'll look at block number 42 and the pinwheel. If we join these two blocks right here up at the top, and so from the top uh, about halfway down and stop and do some back stitches, that will create a seam that is the same length as this block right above it. So we'll join these two with an open seam, press that open, and then we can sew together block number, what is that, 65? Then this will become one unit, which will have now a seam right here between this unit and block number 14. So then we'll add a block number 14 and that will give us a seam between these two sections. We're going to end up with an open seam right here where we can join all of these pieces together. And I know it's really confusing and really until you do it, it's, it's really kind of hard to understand. But what I'm going to do is take some uh, still pictures and we'll do a little slideshow as I join our way around this partial seam.
So now here we are with this large section. That's everything you see here on my table. So we worked our way around the pinwheel. We have an open seam here. And that's where we're going to end up connecting, let's see, right through here, our other pieces. So that'll just stay open. It's locked in with some double stitches right up, right there. <laughs> and uh, that'll stay open. I'm gonna pin this to the board and we're going to work on this next section. Let me pause this and bring you a little bit closer. So here's what we have left to do. We have this loose block. We have these two loose blocks. We have this section. We have this large section and of this large section now. So now we're just going to be rotating around this little tiny heart block. The very first thing I think I'm going to do, let's see, if I join the heart block to the bottom of number 13, that's going to give me a seam right there. And I'll be able to join this to uh, the section that we just put together. Once that's done, I'll be able to join this section right here and finish that open seam and it'll end up moving down here. <laughs> I'll join this section so that'll come down there. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and join block number four to the bottom with an open seam right here. That'll give me one continuous seam right through there and I can join at the top of that heart block all the way down and finish that. And then I'll have, let's see, this little tiny seam right there and that'll finish up everything. <laughs> I know, that sounds really confusing. What I really suggest, if you've never done partial seams before, is cut yourself a few blocks and uh, rotate them around one smaller block right in the middle and practice your partial seams as you work your way around the middle block. I think that will help a lot. And then when we show this, you'll be like, oh yeah, I know exactly what she's doing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do this off camera. I think we've shown enough for today. If I get this done by the end of the day, then we'll come back and, uh, yeah, we'll meet back when this section is together, hopefully if I have enough time. Nope, I just realized what time it was. <laughs> I have to go cook dinner because Bethany is going to be off to work here really soon. So we fared pretty well with the weather today. We are in Williamsburg, so we're about 45 minutes north of Virginia Beach. Oh, well, maybe an hour north of Virginia Beach. And uh, so we were just on the tail skirts of the storm. It's still cloudy and raining off and on and every once in a while we get a good gust of wind but our kids down in Virginia Beach they do not have power but they feared the storm pretty well and uh, yeah now they're just waiting for their power to come on. I think the worst of the storm is gone now and it's time to make dinner so I am not sure if I'm working tomorrow. I probably am because y'all see all the stuff I have left to do on this quilt top. So if I do, I'll upload a video tomorrow, and if not, I'll see you Monday. Bye, everybody.